Let's get more on this move and, and also Netflix's stock move higher. Bring in Michael Pachter of Wedbush Securities. Michael, great to have you with us. Hi, Melissa. So, you know, in trying to, to figure out the importance of, of buying this game studio to Netflix, you had the quote probably of the day, and that is, the purchase of Night School Studios is analogous to one of the broadcast networks buying the badminton channel. So you don't think it's a big deal, or you're a huge fan of badminton. Which one is it? I actually do like badminton. Um, <laughs> I, look, I think Pete said it really well. Um, Netflix is going to chase eyeballs. And Reed Hastings made a comment probably two years ago that his biggest competitor was Fortnite. And he's right. You know, if you roll back to our childhood, and I'm older than you, but your childhood, we all watched five hours of TV a day, and nobody thought much about it. Now we're watching two hours of TV a day. We're playing games three hours. So, you know, I think Reed is addressing the demographic shift away from video entertainment and toward video games. And I think getting into this business is a really, really smart move. And I'm, I'm totally skeptical that they'll succeed. But I was really skeptical that they'd succeed with the uh, original owned content. And, you know, it took them 10 years, but they're actually pretty good at it now. So I think Pete's right that this is an area they have to be in. They're going to have to invest a lot. Um, I had to look up night school studios, and I, I, I know you know this, but I know everything about video games, and if I haven't heard of them, they're, they're the badminton channel. So that's not the move you want to see them make. You want to see them buy Warner Brothers Interactive, which is a real studio, probably for sale, and really makes great games, and you want to see them license all the Warner Brothers content. That would be a multi-billion dollar deal, but that's the kind of thing they really have to do. Did they buy a studio to make uh, content, Michael, to make movies, to make series? Did they buy a studio? You know, that would be a really dumb idea, but it's possible. No, um, I mean, did, no, I'm asking you, did they? And, and I'm asking that sort of knowing the answer, which is no, because right. now they're really good at it, right? And they got good at it on their own. So, I mean, they, yeah, they I mean, can it's, totally it's, do this. Know, I, I mean, we're seeing a lot of crossover of content. So, you know, clearly you've seen what Disney did with Marvel and Lucas and, you know, turning Mar the Marvel comic book universe into a bunch of really great movies and TV shows. And I think Netflix would really like to be there someday, but they're not there. Um, you don't start with a video game studio. You start with video game IP if you want to do that. That's why I said Warner Brothers actually makes much, 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 much more sense. Um, but, you know, there's not that much crossover appeal between games and, and film, games and TV. Um, you can name on the fingers of one hand, you know, Mortal Kombat and Resident Evil, you know, Lara Croft, the successful video games that have turned into movies. And those movies haven't been that great. So it's really hard. And Netflix is not the entity that's going to pull this off. Disney's tried three times and failed. Um, I think this is a really audacious move on, on Netflix's part. But I agree with Pete that this is something they actually have to do. So they're pursuing the right avenue. It's just a question of whether they execute. Hey, Michael, it's Tim. So welcome to the big show. And I guess that's my, my question really is forget the badminton channel. Um, but, but who's really going out to buy uh, the name that matters? And who is the name that matters? And, and how about EA Sports? And how about Activision? And, and how about, you know, take two and, and some of these companies that really are monsters uh, and the valuations aren't terrible, uh, at least relative to where they've been for a slate and for growth that they're giving. Are they in play at this point? Are they too big? Full disclosure, I have a man crush on Tim Seymour. Um, the, the, uh, wow. the, de the demographics of the gaming industry are so favorable. I mean, they are set up in, in the 2020s the way healthcare was set up in the 1960s with Medicare where we had an aging population consuming more and more of the product. That's what we have with video games now. Um, add to that the tech shift that we're able to stream games to any screen. And the guys who own IP and know how to turn that into good games are going to win. So yes, Activision, yes, EA, yes, Take-Two, Ubisoft. Uh, the one I would hold back on is Nintendo because they seem stuck with the old business model. Uh, so yes, you're talking about high single digit top line growth probably the next 15 years and leverage on that. So probably 15%-ish earnings growth, way better than the market as a whole. You want to be in the sector. Um, the one thing that people really have missed is this Apple Epic lawsuit is massively beneficial for mobile game publishers, mobile game developers. Um, Apple charges 30%. 
Judge, Judge Rogers said you are not allowed to stop them from diverting traffic to another store. Ultimately, somebody, and I think that's Unity, is going to build a store as a game module as part of the game design. And companies like Zynga and Playtika are going to offer their, their items in their own store side by side with the Apple's App Store. Um, and you're going to see that 30% margin that they pay to Apple wither down to at least 20, or at most 20, probably as low as five. So I think the, the economics for the mobile publishers are, are massive. Mm -hmm. Activision is the biggest of the integrated publishers in mobile. That's, they have about a third of their revenue from mobile. Mm -hmm. EA is at about 20%, Take-Two, and uh, Ubisoft are much smaller. All right, Michael, great to speak with you. Michael you, Pastor. Michael. He's got a self-professed man crush on Tim Seymour. I think that makes the end of the year real yeah. on Fast Money. Um, Guy, where do you want to take this, yeah. whether it be the man crush bit or, or what I thought was interesting, aside from the man crush bit, uh, was the mobile gaming aspect. And that's not something we often talk about in the context of an Activision or an EA, et cetera. Yeah, well, no particular order. First to Michael, uh, take a number, number one. <laughs> number two, I think it's refreshing for Michael. I mean, listen. <laughs> You know, he was pretty outspoken for years in his dislike of Netflix, and he's acknowledged that, hey, you know, he didn't think they were able to do it. And now he acknowledges, you know what, that he surprised them. I mean, that's really what his job is about. To a certain extent, that's what we do as well. So I admire him for that. I'll stay with Netflix, though. We really haven't wavered on this one. In terms of them not going big into gaming, I think that's smart. I mean, they're dipping their toe into something, and they're seeing how it's going to work out. So, again, Reed Hastings, to me, I've said it 100 times, the most underrated CEO in the country. I think the stock is in a new level now, traded up to 619. I think they report on October 19th, and I think this surprised people. I think the stock has some uh, giddy up left in it. Pete, where would you go for video games? <laughs> oh, uh, you know, Mel, it's it, I am no pro in that that world at all. But I think EA is one of the names that I, I and Act, Activision, those two names. But I, you know, I, I appreciate what Michael was saying. I got to tell you, it is about eyeballs, and it is a, a, about all this diversification that we talk about all the time. And you were asking Tim a question earlier, and it made me think, Mel, you were talking about, well, what would you buy if things went to the south? And I would say that I'd like to answer that, even though you didn't ask me, Mel, but, uh, you know, Disney. I've been against Disney for a long time. It was over $200. It was way overpriced. I think that based upon that and where Disney has fallen to now, near the 170 level or below, I think this is a name, if the, if the S&P goes towards 4100 I think that's a name that's going to go a lot lower, and then suddenly the multiple looks like something that's much more acceptable. So I, I think that staying in that media world, you know, they jumped into streaming. It took them forever. They were late getting there. But once they got there, they've absolutely executed. I think that's what Netflix is going to do as well with the gaming world. I think that they are a team that can go after it and start to compete almost immediately.